All right, class, um, today we are going to be talking about the introduction to the periodic table. Now, some of you did this in class. So if you did this in class, you don't need to do this PowerPoint presentation. Okay, we already went over it. If it's looking familiar, you don't need to do it. For the rest of you, um, you can either go through this PowerPoint presentation on your own and just click through it, go at your own speed. Um, I put all the notes on the slides of things you need to know. Um, or if you'd rather just watch it with me and go through it with me, that's fine as well. Um, but two things to notice is the first thing is it says to take notes on the highlighted things in yellow. So please don't copy everything down on the slides. I tried to shorten it for you so that it's shortened. Um, the next thing says you'll need to print a blank periodic table and have seven different colored pencils or crayons to use. So right now, what you need to do is you need to pause the video and you need to make sure that you have your notes. You have a printed copy of the periodic table and colored pencils or crayons. Now, I know some of you don't have access to a printer. And so if you don't, that's okay. Um, you won't be able to do part of that activity here, but really try to get a printed copy. Um, I will have some in class for people who come in and see me, or if you're a distance learner and wanna come in on a Friday, let me know. Um, but for the rest of you, try to print one out, try to get a printed copy. Um, it will make this activity a lot easier and it will make the rest of class a lot easier because you'll have your own periodic table. All right, let's get started because it's a little bit of a long PowerPoint. So the first thing that says, how is the periodic table organized? So hopefully at this point you have a periodic table in front of you. Remember, you need to get one printed. Um, and so look at it and look and see how it's organized. So I'll just go back to the screen so we can look. Um, in some of the periodic tables, you also see a mass number. Um, so if you look, you can see from our left side to our right side, it increases in atomic number, which are the number of protons. So our periodic table is organized by our, our atomic number, our number of protons. Also, if we had a mass number on our periodic table, we would see that it increases in mass as well. There's sometimes where it doesn't, but for the most part, it increases in mass as we go from left to right down our periodic table. So this is the first slide you need to start writing about. It says, how's the periodic table organized? You're going to write the periodic tables organized by atomic number, number of protons. Um, there are also things that are called groups or, fam or families and periods that the periodic table is organized by, and we're going to talk about those in the next couple slides um, and talk about that organization. So if you're not done writing the notes, I'd pause the video and write it. I'm not going to give you enough time to write every slide, so you need to pause the video and write down the yellow and then move on with the video. All right, so we talked about it's organized by numbers. The next slide says, talks about periods. So periods are the rows that go across in your periodic table. So um, I'm going to change the slide really fast. So just pause if you're writing and let's go up here. So periods are here, these ones that go across. Okay, it's the ones that go across. You can see the letter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They go across. These bottom two rows actually fit up here. And so there's only seven periods. Okay, notice that there's only seven. These aren't eight and nine. They go in rows six and seven. So we have seven periods that all go across. All right, so um, if you look at your periodic table, you'll see that Na, Mg, Al, Si, P, S, C, L, and Ar are all in the same period. Um, and the reason why this is important is because elements that are in the same period have the same electrons in um, the same energy level. So all their electrons, you know how we've talked about electrons? found in those rings in Bohr's model. So all the electrons are found in the same ring. So Na and Mg are, are found, they have their electrons found in this ring. If we were to move outward, they'd be found in more outward rings. All right, so like I said, pause the video, finish writing it down, because we're gonna move on. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start labeling our periodic table. So during this video, you're gonna have to do note-taking and then labeling a periodic table, and then note-taking and labeling your periodic table. So this label is pretty easy. Um, you're just going to write periods up here and then put an arrow going down, okay? It just reminds us that these are different periods. These things going across, they're different periods. So like K, C, A, S, C, T, I, that's all in one period. This is all in period one, two, three, four. These are all in period four. So I might ask you, like, which elements are found in period two? And you'd have to be able to count period one, period two, and then tell me L, I, B, E, B, C, N, O, F. Any. Okay, and again, those are all things that are found um, in the same energy level. So the next thing we're going to talk about are groups or families. So groups or families are another way that our periodic table is organized. So um, these are the columns that go up and down in our periodic table. 
Um, so if we look at our periodic table, you can pull it out in front of you. Um, you will see that we have eight um, groups that we're going to talk about. Okay, we're going to skip the middle section right here, but we're going to have one group here, a second group here, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight groups. Okay, so um, I would copy down the things in yellow. Remember, you don't need to write the things not in yellow. Um, and we're going to label these groups 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A. So they're going to have an A next to them. That just tells us that um, with this numbering system, we're skipping the middle part. Okay. Um, and so, um, again, if you look at your periodic table, you can see that things that are in the same, I might ask you for things in a group. So I might say, which group are in 4A? And you would have to look at your periodic table and find 4A and tell me what things are in that group. Um, and grouping is really, really important in chemistry. Um, groups have similar properties and characteristics. So we call them families. You know, you and your family, you're similar. You're not the exact same, but you're similar. Um, you have a similar last name, or you look similarly, or you have similar interests. You're similar. Um, and so in groups in our periodic table are also really similar. So they're going to react similarly, and they're going to have similar properties as the things in their groups. So I might ask on a test, like, what has a similar property as nitrogen? And so you'd have to look at your periodic table and you have to go to nitrogen and you'd have to see, you know, the P does, AS does, SB, BI, these all have the same characteristics as nitrogen because they're all in the same group or the same family. All right, that's going to be a question on your homework. So make sure you understand that. All right, I'm going to move on. Remember, pause the video if you still need to write. So now we're going to start labeling our periodic table. Um, so here at the top, we're going to put groups going sideways, and then we're going to put these labels 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A. So um, that's going to be really important because now I can start helping you guys find elements on your periodic table. You know how in class you raise your hand, you're like, miss, where is chlorine? I can tell you, look under 7A, and you can go to 7A on your periodic table, and you can find chlorine really fast. Um, so make sure that you're putting those groups right at the top. I have a periodic table here. I'm going to try to show you guys where you're going to label your groups. You see 1A, 2A, and then 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A. Again, we're skipping this middle part in our periodic table. Um, those elements don't necessarily follow the same rules that we're talking about today, so we're going to skip them and not talk about them for right now. All right, finish copying that down. Pause the video if you need to. All right, so now we're going to start talking about metals. So um, some of our elements on our periodic table are metals, some are nonmetals, and some are metalloids. So we're first going to talk about metals. And so here are the properties of metals. Um, they're good conductors of heat and electricity. They're malleable. So that means that if we smash them with a hammer, they're going to flatten out instead of crumbling everywhere. Okay. They're also ductile, which means that we can stretch them into thin wires. So they're not going to like break when we stretch them. Um, they're luster, so they're really shiny, and they're usually solid at room temperature. There's going to be one that isn't, but for the most part, they're solid at room temperature. Um, so I would write down the definitions if you don't know what malleable, ductile, and luster are, because those will be on your test. Um, I put some examples on the side. So the first, this top one, is copper. So that is a metal. You guys are pretty familiar with that. So this is, these are copper wires. You can see that they've been able to be stretched. This bottom one is gold. So that's gold jewelry and, and gold, we can pound it out and we can flatten it or put it into rings or things like that. So it's very malleable. It can be moved without crumbling. All right, the so metals actually make up a lot of our periodic table. So the next thing we're gonna do when you're done copying this slide is that we're going to um, color in all of the metals on our periodic table. And so let me, Put you to that slide. Like I said, pause this if you still need to finish writing down these words. Um, and email me if you have any questions on any of these words. I know that it's new vocabulary for you. So here is what we're coloring in. So there's a few things I want you to note before you color that are very, very important. And lots of people in class messed up on this. So listen. Right here are our metals. You need to make sure that you have a color that you're going to choose for metals. You're going to color in this whole block that we see that's all metals. And so color it in very lightly. Don't color it too deep and too dark because we want to be able to still see our atomic number and our mass underneath. So color it in really lightly. Um, you also want to make sure that you're making this key at the bottom. So see, I chose red, and then here's the, my red, and it says metals. 
Now, we also see with the metals, if you look closely here, it kind of has a stair step pattern that we need to follow. So I'm going to hold it up closer to my screen if you want to look and see what it looks like. Um, or you can also Google. They'll show you the stair step pattern if you Google this. Um, but here are some things to note up here. Hydrogen is not a metal, so don't color that one in. And then over here, we have our stair steps. So everything on this side, the aluminum and all of that, is what we're going to color. Everything on this side, we're not going to color yet. So don't color B, C, S, I. Don't color any of this stuff. Color all of this stuff. All right. This is going to take you a while to color. So please pause the video to finish coloring, um, and I'm going to keep moving on. But also, just a note, remember, make your key at the bottom. That's super important. All right. Hopefully you guys paused the video, colored, and now we're back. Um, we're going to be talking about nonmetals. Just a note, make sure that you made your key at the bottom for metals. Now we're going to talk about nonmetals. So there are some properties of nonmetals that you need to know. The first of them is that they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. So that means, you know, they don't pass on heat very well. They're not very hot. They don't get hot easy. They can get hot, but not very easy. The next is that they're brittle. So they shatter if they're hit with a hammer. So you can see up here in this corner, it's not like the gold. This is yellow material, but it didn't flatten like the gold did. It shattered if we hit it. The next thing is that it can be a liquid, a solid, or a gas at room temperature. Also, with these notes, I'm happy if you guys shorten them. So you could say it could be solid, liquid, or gas if you don't want to write at room temperature or something like that. So while you're writing, I'll talk about some of the examples we see up here. So up here in this right corner is sulfur. Um, that's if you've ever gone to Yellowstone. It's what smells really bad. This is sulfur. Down here we have neon. So what makes up those neon signs is an element called neon. Um, and it is a non-metal. And then right here we have some balloons. They're filled with helium. And so um, we all know helium. You know, if you puncture one of those balloons and you suck on it, it makes your voice go really high. So that's one of the elements on our periodic table. It's a non-metal. All right. Pause the video if you need to. We're going to move on to the coloring part of our non-metals. So here are our yeah, non-metals. So like I said with this one, you just need to color the yellow. Don't color the purple yet. So um, up here with hydrogen, that one's a non-metal. And then here we have the stair steps again. Okay, so pause the video and zoom in if you need to. See that, you know, carbon is yellow, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, SE, BR, I, AT. So make sure that you have the stair steps and that all the things on this side are yellow. But don't color in any of these purple yet. All right, make sure you also make your key at the bottom for non-metals. This is really important because this is giving you answers for your test. On your test, I might ask you, which one of these is a non-metal? And instead of having to memorize, you can just look at your periodic table and see which ones you colored in the non-metal color. And you can say, oh, it's these ones. Or I might ask you, like, which one makes up the most of our periodic table? Metal, non-metal, or metalloid? And you'd say, oh, it's metals. Metals make up the most um, of our periodic table. And we colored in a lot for metals. All right. So pause the video again if you haven't. Make sure that you color it in and that you make your key at the bottom. Okay. So we're going to talk about our last group now. It is our metalloids. So metalloids have the same properties as our metals and some properties of our non-metals. So it's going to be an in-between of our metal and our non-metal. Um, so you can see right here we have this rock thing. It's like kind of shiny. So it has that kind of a property of a metal, but it also is crumbly, so it has that property of a non-metal. So it's like a mixture of both of them. Then you can see on the left here, it's um, a computer part. So metalloids are used a lot in computers. And, you know, to make computer parts, computer chips, things like that. So they're really important when we um, are talking about technology. There's what makes, you know, computer making and things like that possible for us. So metalloids are very important. All right, we're going to color in our metalloids, so pause if you need to finish writing. So now we're doing our purple part. So you can see our purple part is our weird stair step part. So at this point, if you've colored in the rest, you just need to color in whatever is blank still, color that in purple or whatever color you're using. Make sure to color it in lightly, make sure to be careful. Um, and then down here at the bottom, make your key. So for me, see, I have my reds, the metals, my yellows, non metals, my purple metalloids. This is really important because you might forget on your test which one is which. All right, so pause the video if you need to. I'm going to keep moving on so this video isn't too long for you. So now we're going to be talking about certain groups. And we're going to be talking about these groups and some of their properties because they're going to be really important and we're going to talk about them a lot in class. So the first are our noble gases. So these are non-reactive gases that make up group 8A. 
Okay, so write that down. Non-reactive gases that make up group 8A. So these ones, if we make, if we try to mix them with something else, if we put them next to something else, they're not going to mix. They're not going to do a chemical reaction or anything. Okay, so they're not reactive. They want to be separate from everyone else. They don't want to be mixed with anything. That's why there are noble gases. You know, some people think nobility doesn't want to be mixed with the commoners. So they try to separate themselves. So that's the same thing with noble gases. They don't want to mix. So pause if you need to. We're going to actually color in noble gases now on our periodic table. So um, you can see noble gases are part of this group 8A. And we don't want to color them all in so we can't see the yellow underneath. You know, we still want to be able to see that these are non-metals. So what I would suggest doing is I would suggest outlining it. So you can see I outlined group 8A in green for noble gases. And I made a key at the bottom. So make sure that you outline that. For noble gases in green. Noble gases are really important that they're not reactive. That might be a question in your test. Which one of these is a not reactive element? And you'd have to say noble gas or HE or one of the elements that is outlined in green or whatever color you choose. Okay, so outline it and then move on to the rest of the video. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is halogens. So halogens are very reactive elements and they're in group 7A. So now you guys know, you can look at your periodic table and you can find 7A yourself and you can see which elements are in that group and which ones are halogens. It's really interesting because if you notice, 7 is right by 8. So 8, they're super unreactive and 7, they're super reactive. So it's interesting that they're right by each other and they're both the extremes. So we're going to label that now. So pause if you need to. All right, here we're outlining the halogens. So you'll see I outlined them in orange. Remember, they're in group 7A. So I went to my top, I found 7A, and then I outlined. And then I went down here and I made the key. So outline, make a key, and then move on to the rest of the video. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is alkali metals. So these are very reactive. That's all you need to put for this slide. Alkali metals, very reactive. They're also in group 1A. So if you want to write that, you can. Um, they're shiny, soft, silvery. Those are some other characteristics of them. So remember, everything in that group in 1A are going to have those characteristics. They're all really similar to each other. So let's outline them. So here I chose, it was a blue color, um, and I outlined them. You'll notice that since we said these are alkali metals, hydrogen isn't a metal, so don't outline hydrogen. Just outline from lithium, Li, down to the bottom. So outline them, and then make your key. Okay, we're just going to do one more group and then we're going to be done. So stay with me. All right, our last one is alkaline earth metals. So these ones are somewhat reactive. So they're not quite as reactive as our alkali metals, but they're somewhat reactive. You also notice that since they're right next to the alkali metals on our periodic table, they're shiny, they're silver white, they're low density, melting point, and boiling point. So they have similar characteristics as our alkali metals, but are not exactly the same because they're next to each other, but not um, in the same group. So pause if you need to, but we're going to move on to coloring. So here are the alkaline earth metals. I did them in brown. So you're just going to go remember they're in 2A. So we're just going to um, outline that whole column for you. And those are your alkaline earth metals. Remember, everything in the same period or in the same group or the same family, these are all going to have similar characteristics to each other. That's something people are missing a lot on their homework. Since I'm not there to answer your questions, remember that fact. Okay. And then make sure you have all your groups outlined. Make sure you have everything colored in. You can pause the video at this point if you want to have the periodic table completely complete in front of you to finish copying what I've colored. Um, but otherwise, we're done. Please let me know if you have any questions, and please work on your worksheet. It's a pretty easy worksheet. It's similar to what we've been talking about today. And email me if you have any questions with it. Remember, I sit at my computer from 7.30, 7.20 to 2.40ish, and so I can just read the email and answer it right away unless I'm at like lunch or a meeting or something. So please email me and I will try to help you. Um, anyways, good luck distance learning guys. I know it's going to be a hard two weeks. It's not my favorite either, but we're going to be able to do it and get through it. And um, hopefully we will be able to understand some more about chemistry when I see you guys again. All right. See you later.